guys, welcome back to another day of CKLA Listening and Learning. We are going to continue our domain on Greek myths, and today we are going to be doing a story called Arachne the Weaver. So, as in all of our Greek stories, we know that Greek myths are stories that happened a long time ago, and they explain things that happen in nature. Today, we're going to talk about a goddess named Arachne the Weaver. So, the reason why her name is Arachne the Weaver is because she combines thread together and yarn in an alternating pattern in order to make cloth. So, she uses a loom, which is right here, and she also uses fabric and other things to make beautiful tapestry. And so, we're also going to talk about a goddess named Athena and how these two connect together. So, our purpose for listening is for us to hear which animal in nature this myth is about. All right? So, I want you to listen closely. Put your listening ears on. Get ready. Long ago, there lived the Greek young woman named Arachne, who was a very gifted weaver. A weaver weaves or spins thread or yarn together to make cloth. Arachne wove upon a wooden frame called a loom. She did not just weave solid colors. She wove tapestries, wonderful woven pictures that people would hang on their walls as art. People came from distant lands to see these masterpieces in Arachne's studio. A visitor might comment, this is amazing. Why look at the leaves on the trees. They look so real that you almost expect them to move in the breeze. And this deer in the meadow looks as if he's going to turn around, bound away. The visitors would tell Arachne, you are the finest weaver in all the world. But then they would add, except, of course, for the goddess Athena, who invented weaving. Athena was actually the goddess of all handcrafts, not just weaving. At first, when people compared Arachne's work to that of Athena's, Arachne was flattered. But as years passed, she began to get annoyed. She would say, I'm sure Athena is very talented, but look, did you see this one over here? As still more years passed, whenever people compared her to the goddess Arachne, would angrily say, I don't care if Athena invented weaving. I think I'm the best weaver in the world. Word of this eventually reached the ears of the goddess Athena on Mount Olympus. She decided to visit Arachne's studio to learn if Arachne was truly saying these things. However, Athena did not want Arachne to recognize her. So with her magic, Athena changed her own appearance from a beautiful, athletic young woman, now with a wave of her hand and a puff of smoke, gone was the young woman, replaced by a woman so old and bent with age that she had to lean with a walking stick to get around. Of course, inside that body was still the goddess Athena, but no one would have recognized her. In this disguise, she went to visit Arachne, commenting, your work is extraordinary, my dear. I'm certain that you are the finest weaver in the world, except, of course, for the goddess Athena. Hearing this, Arachne, thinking she spoke to a bent old woman, angrily exclaimed, I'm sick of hearing about Athena. I say that I am the best weaver in the world. For just a moment, let's pause. Does this mean Arachne's work is good, or does it mean that her work is bad? What do you think? Listen to the sentence. I'm certain that you are the finest weaver in the world, except, of course, for the goddess Athena. Does this mean Arachne's work is good? 
doesn't mean that their work is bad. Let's see. Well, there was a puff of smoke, and when it blew away, who did Arachne see standing there with her but the beautiful goddess Athena? Arachne was afraid of what the goddess might do to her, but she took a deep breath and said, I meant what I said. I'm prepared to prove that I am the best. I have two wooden looms for weaving. You use one, and I shall use the other. Let us see once and for all who is the best. So the goddess and the young woman chose their colors and started to weave. And when at last they stopped, Arachne grinned, for she truly believed she had won. She pointed out all the wonderful features of her work to the goddess. Look, she said, see how the real stream looks tumbling down this hillside and how the water reflects the color of the sunlight as real water would do? And if you move over here to look, the colors actually change the way the real sunlight would change. At last, she turned to see Athena's tapestry. Arachne saw at once that the work of the goddess was even finer than her own. Athena had woven a stream, but hers seemed to ripple and move. She had woven clouds that appeared to float lightly in the sky, and above it all, she had woven the gods in all of their majesty. Upset and embarrassed, Arachne turned and ran from the room. Athena caught up with her, asking, where are you going? Arachne exclaimed, I thought I was the best, but you are superior. And no matter how long and hard I work at it, I will never be as good as you are. I shall never weave again. Then Athena grew stern. Everybody is born with some special gift or talent. If only he or she can figure out what it is and how to use it, you must not waste this skill of yours. We shall see to it that you shall weave again. She reached out and touched Arachne's shoulder with the tip of her finger. Instantly, Arachne began to change shape. She grew smaller and smaller, and her body rounder and rounder. Her legs and arms grew longer and thinner, until after about five minutes, Arachne had turned into the very first spider in the world. Today, we call all the members of the spider family arachnids. Now this is why some people say all spiders are children of Arachne the weaver. Now let's go to our comprehension questions. Our first question is, who is the main character in this myth? Her name or their names were Arachne and Athena. What was their names? Arachne and Athena. And which of these characters is a god or goddess? Great job, Athena. Good job, and how do you know? How do we know Athena was a goddess? She had what? Great, she had special powers. And where did she live? On Mount Olympus. Good job, on Mount Olympus. Now, how does Arachne feel when she sees Athena's superior work? She is upset and embarrassed and refuses to weave again. All right, our next question is, how does this story conclude or end? Do you remember how it ended? Great, with Athena turning Arachne into a Spider, good job. And why does Athena turn Arachne into a spider and not some other kind of animal? Uh, 
Because Arachne was a weaver and spiders, do you know what they weave? They weave webs. Yes. So Athena wanted to ensure that Arachne would always do what? Continue to weave. Good. Great job. All right, guys, so now it's time for a brain break, okay? I'm gonna need you to stand up, wiggle it out, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do 10 jumping jacks. But what we're going to do, we're gonna do 100 jumping jacks. Yes, skip counting by tens, all right? So here we go, get ready. One, two, three, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Great job. Now wiggle it out, wiggle it out, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now sit back down, sit down, sit down. Now we're going to do our word work. Our word today is flattered. In our story, at first, when people compared Arachne's work to that of Athena's work, Arachne was flattered. What word? Flattered, yes. What does flattered mean? If you are flattered, you are pleased by the attention or compliments of others, okay? So, Juanita was flattered by the praise she received from her teacher for her performance on the multiplication test. All right, now it's your turn. Have you ever felt flattered? Well, I felt flattered when I was asked to teach all of you. See, flattered, what's our word today? Flattered. Now for our activity, synonyms. And a synonym is a word that is the same as or similar to another word. So guys, what do you think are some synonyms for flattered? How about praised? Or admired? Or a big word, complimented. Yes, those are all synonyms for the word flattered. Again, say it with me. What word? Flattered. Good job, everybody. Till next time, have a great day. Bye.